Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, we need you to stay here with us and fill us with your love. Join me now as we worship together. Amen. Good morning. We are so glad to have you with us in worship this morning on this holiday weekend. Um, we are starting our annual conference today, so I invite you all to be in prayer for that. The Texas Annual Conference will meet starting this evening and will meet through Wednesday midday. So be in prayer for all of the decisions and voting and all that other stuff. And Jennifer says be in prayer for her and I because we're two introverts sharing the same hotel room down at annual conference and it should be just great. We're going to have a great time, aren't we, Jennifer? <laughs> and now will you please stand and join us as we worship.
Good morning. Please remain standing for our call to worship. Jesus prayed for his disciples, giving them into God's eternal care. Jesus prays for us, giving us into God's care. Jesus prayed that all who believed would be unified as one. Let us live as God is, striving for unity through love. Open your hearts and spirits now as we worship together today. Amen. And now please join me as we affirm our faith with, I think I chose the Korean creed. I did, right? Yeah, the Korean Methodist Church Creed. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the word of God contained in the Old and New Testament, as the sufficient rule both of faith and practice. We believe in the church, those who are united to the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Weekend edition. Climb time. Weekend edition. Good morning and welcome to Klein UMC. Please use your phone to sign in with the QR code on the back of the pew. Even if you've done it a thousand times, we appreciate you signing in each week. If you're watching online, please use the sign in link on the page or leave us a note in the comment section. Save the date for our next quarterly blood drive on June 19th. Signups are available online. Miss Megan would like to give a huge thank you to all of the volunteers who helped with VBS Decorating Day. We are so ready for a monumental week thanks to you all. Speaking of VBS, don't forget there's an all-volunteer meeting on June 5th at 12 p.m. in room 308. If you're unable to volunteer the week of VBS but still want to help, you can donate snacks for the volunteers. Sign up on our website and make sure to drop them off by June 12th. Please join the youth choir as they present Life in Christ, a short musical offering of songs about praising, trusting, and loving Christ in our daily lives. They will be leaving after the service to travel to Branson and Arkansas, so come be blessed by the music and pray over them as they travel. Life in Christ will be at 1015 a.m. in the sanctuary next Sunday, June 5th. The presentation will also be live streamed. Have a great week. Hi friends, who do you pray to? Why do you pray? When do you pray? Who do you pray for? The answers to the why and when and who we pray for questions might be different for each one of you, but I hope that the answer to who you pray to is the same. We pray to God. We pray to him when we are in pain. We pray to him in hope. We pray to him when we need help. We pray to him when we are lost. We pray to him when we want to tell him thank you. We pray to him on behalf of others we care about. We pray. Even Jesus, God's son, prayed to him when he was here on earth. He prayed for many different reasons, but did you know that he prayed for you and me? He knew us and loved us even before we were born and wanted his father 
God to love us too. In John 17, verses 20 to 26, Jesus prayed for all believers. He prayed that we would be one with each other and with God and Jesus. He prayed for us to see his glory. He prayed that he would continue to make God known in order for the love God had for Jesus to be in us and for Jesus himself to be in us. He prayed for us to be with God and him. And he prayed for us to know the love that God has and is ready to give. He cared enough about us to stop and pray for us. His prayer for all believers, including me, is one of many ways that he shows he loves me. And it also makes me stop and think about how important prayer is. If it was that important to Jesus, it should be that important to me. This week, focus on your prayers. God is ready to listen to them, just like he did for Jesus. See you next week. Amen, amen. <clears throat> hey, do this. I need thee every hour. Oh, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine. And peace of four. I need you to do the chorus with me. I need Say that. Every yes. Oh, bless. Come on, say it. I come to say it again. I need, I need the old. Yes. Yeah. Oh, 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 I need you to bless. You know, I can tell the choir is sitting out here today. That's so sweet. Thank you. Thank you. It's prayer time. And I think the words of the song express where I am right now. I got things I'm thankful for. Things that are weighing on me seem to be heavier. I don't know about you, but I've watched too much news lately. I've gotten to hear stories of 11-year-olds who put paint on themselves, or blood, painted blood on themselves, and lay dead in order to... I, I don't know about you, but I've watched too much news. But I've come to find out over time that in times like these, Ben Miller, all I can do is cry out to God. And I recommend that you do the same. My heart is heavy, and yet I know that we serve a God who's able. So I invite you now to bow with me as we Talk to God. Loving Father, we do need you. We need you in the way a little boy needs his mother. Over in the night when it's dark and scary. We need you in the way that this adolescent kid needs his father when he's trying to figure out 
what to believe and who to trust. We need you, oh God, like that mother and father needs you in the midst of a family discussion and trying to figure out how to save the lives of their children. God, we need you now in a desperate kind of way. And so we stop in the midst of worship to acknowledge that you are still sovereign and that you can make all things well. I need to celebrate families who have graduated high school, college. I got folk who celebrated a pre-K graduation. Thank you for families. Thank you for accomplishments. Thank you for those who have sold into the lives of graduates. Help them that they may move from that place to the next place and to continue to grow. God, thank you for celebrations of life. God, we know that you are in the midst of them all and so we don't have to call them out, but I just need you to know we're grateful and we don't take for granted. But God, can I just be honest with you? My heart is heavy now because death seems to be so rampant. So much pain. So much hurt. God, I've just never learned how to see it and not be affected by it. And so I'm crying out to you because I know you can fix it. Here's what I need you to know I need right now. I need you to hold me in the meantime. I need you to look among us and speak a peace to us and look among us and hold us in the midst of our storms. Look, look among us and know what we need right now in order that we might remain faithful. We've been in storms before. <laughs> Can I just tell you, God, they never get easy. And so we're trusting you now to look at our world. The Ukrainian crisis that continues to exist. Look at our nation. From Brooklyn to Uvalde. Look at our community. Know us. Heal our brokenness. Ease our pains. And renew our strength. Because <laughs> God, I've been made up my mind. We're, we're going on. We're going on. There's no doubt in our minds that we're going to lose. We're going on. need you to hold us and guide us and sometimes carry us as we commit to staying faithful to your call. Thank you now for the opportunity to call you father, for the opportunity to know you as the best mother that ever lived. To be able now to rest in that. We thank you now and remember Jesus, our risen Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth mm -hmm. as it is in heaven. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand as we continue to worship? Amen. 
the splendor of the King. Oh, in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps in love in light, and darkness cries behind, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. Come to the time in our service where we give of our tithes and our offerings. Um, I will remind you that you can give by texting to the link that should be that is shown on the screen, or there's uh, plates as you leave the sanctuary. You know, this week, uh, last Sunday, we had a group of volunteers come in and work to get decorations ready for Vacation Bible School, which is coming in, I think, two weeks. Two weeks, y'all. We've almost. We're almost there. And we had more people show up than we were expecting, and they were done faster than they thought they would be, and the response has just been amazing. And for that, we are so grateful to be in ministry with you. Will you pray with us? God, as we continue to prepare for all of these children who are going to come to this church for Vacation Bible School, we are grateful in the ways that we get to partner with you to be in ministry in this community, for this church to be a beacon of light. And so as an act of worship of who you are and who you called us to be, we give these gifts to you and pray that they will continue 
to allow this church to be your church, your beacon, your light in this community. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Oh, falling in love with Jesus. It was the best thing I had ever done. Can y'all help me say that? Falling in love with Jesus, with Jesus. Oh, falling, falling in love with Jesus. With Jesus. The best thing I ever Come on, say this with me. In His arms. Falling, falling in love. 
Jesus. With Jesus. Oh, falling in love. Falling in love. With Jesus. Can I say it again? Was the best thing I've ever done. And then you know that last time, then it was the best thing I've ever, 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 ever done. Oh. Glory to God. The scripture is from John 17, verses 20 through 26. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me, have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, the Spirit has a way of offering us what we need even before we know we need it. And this is just the lectionary text for this Sunday. But, Gene, I got to tell you, it's a good time to talk about prayer. And I think it's so, in, 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 it, it's, it's exciting to understand that Jesus didn't just pray, but he continues. That's why you see it says Jesus prays. In our scripture text for today, we see Jesus in a serious conversation, George. And it's a conversation with God, his father. Jesus is praying to the father. He understands that his time with the disciples was coming to an end. And he's concerned about how the disciples are going to fare once he's gone. And he wants God to continue to take care of them, all of them who had decided who would follow him now and those who will decide later that they will follow him as Lord and Savior. He was concerned, and rightfully so, because if you look at chapter 18, following this, Jennifer, it turns, and this is when he's arrested, and things begin to, <laughs> he begins to take his journey to the cross. So, Michael, he has reason to be concerned, but there's something very telling, I believe, Earl, about how Jesus chose to spend his last hours, his last days, his last time before being taken away. I think, Cheryl, there's something that we can learn about the power of prayer, the nature of prayer, when we understand that of all the things, Don Porter, that Jesus could have been involved in when he knew he was about to be taken out and he wasn't coming back that way anymore, of all the things he could have decided to do, what do we find him doing? We find him praying, talking to God. 
And I, I can't tell you how important the institution of prayer has been for me all my life. But I can tell you that there are several things about the act of prayer itself that I think are worth raising. Just kind of stay with me, and, and, and we're going to do this. So first of all, prayer implies relationship. Jesus isn't talking to a stranger. He's not talking to someone who doesn't know who he is. But this is the son talking to the father. And Brother Paul, he knew he could because of the nature of their relationship. John says it over and over, and he emphasizes it perhaps more than any other gospel writer, that Jesus and God are one. And there is a very strong bond. Now, the good news is, because of Jesus, we too are afforded the same rights and privileges as it relates to coming to God. We too can come to God as beloved children. We too are seen by God as beloved sons and daughters of the Most High. It's because Jesus worked it out but I don't want you to miss the opportunity to be engaged in relationship. Now, to be clear, we are not equals to God. Don't get this confused. This, 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 is, this ain't a marriage. This is a relationship where God is the authority that we submit to. God is the power source that we tap into. God is the sovereign one that we lean in. That's the nature of this relationship. He never intended to bring us in as equals. But as one who could be trusted with the very near and dear things to our hearts. I think today it's important as we move into a Memorial Day weekend and we begin to reflect over things that have gone on in the past, to reflect over things that are currently happening. And we begin to, I don't know about you, but I begin to think about the people that are no longer here and think about what I'm missing and what I'm losing. And in the midst of it all, I have to stop and remind myself that the constant, Al, that does not change is my relationship with God. And so I just ask as I move on to my next point, how is your relationship with God? How is it? How are you doing at it? The other thing that prayer also implies is that it implies a desire to know and to be known. <laughs> As Jesus is talking to God, he is speaking straight from his heart. Jesus spoke to God about the things that were important to him. This relationship, Eric, affords us privacy. It affords us intimacy. It affords us the kind of personal kind of thing. And, and, and so it's like early on, Miss Janice, in my relationship with God, I learned that I could be comfortable being naked before God because he knows all my blemishes and he knows all my secrets. And here's the thing, when you give in to that, as you are allowing yourself to be known by God, then God allows himself to be known by you because he can be trusted. You see, it's only as you allow him to know your need will you get to know him as a supplier of every need. It's, it's about understanding that we can tell him our secrets. We can talk about the things that matter. And sometimes when it gets too much for words and we, we, we can't really 
put our word, you know, sometimes you're trying to talk and words get in the way. Has that happened to anybody other than me? I mean, sometimes you, you, you're trying to say it, but it won't come out like you think you want to say it. And but, but, but we keep trying and we keep working at it. Well, sometimes the Spirit of God can read our spirits and we don't have to say a word. That's how intimately known we are. But we can know God as much as we want to be known by him. And friends, I've come to know God as the perfect confidant. I, I trust Karen with a lot of stuff, but she got some folks she going to tell her. And she and Carrie talk about me when I'm not around. Sometimes they do when I'm around, but Jesus, God is the perfect confidant. I, I got to go on because I got to talk to you about the nature of the prayer. Not only does prayer imply relationship, not only does it imply a desire to know and to be known, but here's the other thing. Prayer implies a deep faith and trust in the one to whom we pray. Brother Manny, I have to ask over and over again, believers who are going through and seem to continue to have this constant battle between praying and worrying, because you know how that works, right, Bob? You know, if you're going to worry... Why pray? But if you're going to pray, then why worry? Prayer, Terry, says you trust God enough. Prayer says that you understand that while it may be more than you can handle, Jerome, you know somebody who's able. And when you go to him, you don't go to him saying, God, if you, if you can. <laughs> you go to him saying, God, I know you can. And so I come asking, not in doubt. I, I just, I got to go on, but I need you to hear me. Do you pray to God in full confidence in God's ability to do what you ask? to provide what you need. In other words, here's the magic question that nobody can answer for you but you. How much do you trust God? How much? I've got a suggested tool that you can use. to answer that question. And you ask yourself this, how often do I find myself turning to God for the things that I need in my personal life? And another way of saying it is, are there any things in my personal life that I don't trust God to handle? You know, I'm convinced that my grandmother, God rest her soul, had a faith and a deep confidence in God in a lot of areas. But I'm convinced, Don Knapp, that my grandmother believed up until she died that she could take better care of her children than God could. And Brother Kent, the reason I say that is because she bossed them up, up until she died. Because she thought she was right. Are there things in your circle that you just can't trust God enough to turn over to him? I, I got to go on, but you, you know the answer. But here's what I'll say to you. Now's a mighty good time to put God to a test. <laughs> Now's a mighty good time to prove him to be true to his word. Trust God. Pray to God. And watch God work it out. This prayer that he prays is specific. 
because he recognizes his time is short. John 17 opens with Jesus praying that he himself might be glorified. He knows he's getting ready to go into Gethsemane. He knows he's getting ready to go on a cross. And he says, now, God, I'm going through this, expecting that you will complete the story that you've started by raising me up to eternal life. Brother Jim, he wanted to make sure that he and God were still on the same plan as it related to the end game because he says, I'm going to die, but I don't stay there. I got to get up. After he finishes praying for his own glorification, then he prays for his disciples. He asks God to set them apart and to protect them from becoming like others. He says to them, to God, I want them to be consecrated which is to be set apart. And he says their consecration is going to make them available to be used by God to gain others who have not yet become believers. Now, this is so important because let me tell you something. One of the reasons that it is difficult for you as a believer to really win others over to Christ is because they see you doing the same stuff they do it. They hear you talking the same language. Oh, I don't do Facebook. But I can tell you, some of the stuff I see and hear folk put on it doesn't reflect that they're trying to win souls for Christ. He says, I want them set apart. I want them to be different. I want them to know and to be known that they don't have to act like they can be of the, in the world and not of the world. They're going to have to stand out. He prays that through the witness and through the message of his disciples that others will come to know the truth of the gospel story. What is your witness? What is your message? And you might think that what you say on Facebook you might think that the way you believe politically, you might believe that the actions that you take socially don't have anything to do with what you believe as a Christian. Well, I stopped by to tell you, you couldn't be further wrong. Nothing could be further from the truth. Who I am in my heart gets spelled out in everything else. Somebody tell that preacher he meddling. But you got to ask the question, what's your witness? What's the message? He says, not only do I hope that they will portray the gospel message, but ultimately, I pray that those on the right and those on the left and all of the rest of us in the middle might become one. But John Smith, I don't know of a more appropriate prayer that we could pray today than to pray that those of us who are extremely one way and those of us who are extremely another way can look beyond our differences and begin to celebrate the things that we have in common. And the thing that we have in common is we got a friend in Jesus, Bob. <laughs> we got a Lord and Savior who loved us so much, John, that he died on an old rugged cross. Becca, we got a lot of things we can celebrate together. God is still in the prayer answering business. So I'm going to invite you to join me today as we reflect on Jesus' prayer. We pray that we can stop focusing on the things that we disagree on and begin to celebrate the things that we do like Jesus is Lord. Let's agree that there's power in the blood. <laughs> Let's agree that God's amazing grace saved all of us. 
let's agree that love is more powerful than hate. Can you join me on that? Can we join in together and pray for one another and for God's church? My great Jesus did. And if Jesus prayed, then Jane, the focus that Jesus had, I think, is good enough focus for us. Let's pray together. Loving God, we are grateful for the opportunity to know you as the source. And we thank you for reminding us of our calling. Thank you for reminding us of the oneness, the unity that you've called us to. Let it be so. In the hearts and minds of all of us who are gathered, physically or virtually, let it be so today, tomorrow, and all the days ahead. For we pray it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank God. Please stand for our closing hymn. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and we'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, we'll know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. We'll gather, we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, we'll know we are Christians by our love. We'll go with each man's pride. And so, my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to leave, here's what I hope. You pray for me, and I'll pray for you, and let's watch God change things. Amen, and thank God.